Let's talk about hay and how much hay. We know in the wild that these animals are spending a huge percentage of their day foraging on many, many different types of plant material. And what that tells us is that they're constantly eating, they're constantly foraging, they're constantly ingesting plant material. That's from the behavioral standpoint. What we also know is from a GI physiology standpoint in these animals that are hindgut fermenters, we know they need hay and they need fiber and plant material constantly going into that system. So when we talk about feeding grass haze, we're talking about free choice. That means available all the time. We want these animals to have access to nice green soft hay that they wanna eat 24 hours a day. Now, all of these animals are gonna eat some hay, they're gonna sleep on some hay, they're gonna use some of their hay for nesting. Frankly, they're gonna pee on some of it, they're gonna poop on some of it as well. So it's important not to just look at the cage and say, oh, there's some hay in there I don't need to give anymore. We want to make sure that there's fresh, clean hay in there that they're going to be interested in eating. We also talked about the fact that these guys are concentrate selectors. So when we're offering them this nice, green, gorgeous orchard hay, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to eat, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to eat all of those nice, soft green leaves. What you're going to end up finding a lot of time is you're going to find this little pile in the corner of all of these stems. They're going to have already eaten the soft leaves and all they're going to have less of the stems and they're going to look at you and say, hey, can I have some more hay? We want them to eat those stems as well. Now, I'm not saying you don't give them any more hay until they eat those stems because we want fresh, clean hay in there all the time, but we want to make sure that they're ingesting some of these stems as well. The take home is make sure you're aware of what hay that they're eating versus what hay they're using for nesting. We want clean, fresh hay available for them to forage on, to eat, to ingest all the time. Now that we've talked about kind of the nutritional component of hay, we also have a leak, kind of discussed a little bit the behavioral impacts of hay. So what are some different ways that we can offer hay that stimulates enrichment, that stimulates foraging, stimulates them to behave as though they would in the wild? And there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. One of the ways that I really like that's safe, natural, and again, forces them to work at it, is to use some of these items in the Timothy Club. These are 100% Timothy hay, no wire, no string, so they can eat the whole thing if they want to. And we can use grass hay to force them to work at it. So what I've done here is I've taken this Timoth Timothy bungalow, I've stuffed it full of grass hay, and in the back of this, I've stuck a, a couple of little veggie treats all the way in the back. They're gonna smell that veggie treat, they're gonna know what's in there, and then they're gonna have to work to get that out of there. While they're going along, they're gonna say, man, there's that nice, beautiful leaf, I'm gonna go ahead and eat that, but they're gonna push and they're gonna pull, they're gonna be physically enriched and working to get to that treat that's back in there, eating the hay at the same time. Now, couple that to the fact that we know these animals are a prey species. So they like to have a place to hide. Whether it's a hamster or a gerbil or a mouse or a rat, whether it's a guinea pig or a small rabbit or a chinchilla, they like to get into a quiet place where they can feel comforted. They're not worried about that, that predator that in their mind is gonna get them. Great way again with the Timothy Club items. The animal can clean all this hay out, they can go in there, they can hang out, they can rest, and lo and behold, if they get hungry, what can they do? Eat their house perfect outcome there. Put a little window in over here or even put a little veranda out the back. But again, it allows a prey species to get a place to hide, to get away. It's a safe, natural enrichment so that if they eat it, which they're going to, they're going to chew on it, they're going to eat it. We don't have to worry about that causing any types of problem. Now, there are certainly other ways outside of Timothy Club that you can use to enrich animals to eat hay. Thinking about a lot of the basic things out there like toilet paper rolls, uh, paper towel rolls, cardboard that we know is not printed on, doesn't have glues on, that's a great way to, again, forcing them to work hard. So take that toilet paper roll, stuff it full of a little bit of hay, maybe put a little bit of a veggie or a small amount of a green or even a little bit of a treat on the inside, put that in their cage. They're gonna roll that around, they're gonna push on that, they're gonna play with it, they're gonna pull that hay out the side. But again, we're physically tying that enrichment to physically activity and also nutritional enrichment. Anything we can do to keep these animals active, invigorated, and stimulated in their lives is going to improve the quality of their life, it's going to lengthen the quality of their life, and again, going to get them that hay that we know is so important.